Before getting started with today's episode, I'd like to thank the sponsors behind Web3 Deep Dive. Thank you to Merlin Chain. Merlin Chain is committed to empowering Bitcoin's native assets, protocols, and products on Layer 1 through its Layer 2 network to make Bitcoin fun again. Thank you to Freedom GPT. Freedom GPT is the app store for artificial intelligence that allows anyone to access any AI model. Finally, thanks to JTX Media for the video and audio production behind this podcast, based out of Austin, Texas. Hey everyone, welcome back to Web3 Deep Dive Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Wolfson. Today, I'm very excited for a special guest. I'm speaking with John Deden. He is a candidate for U.S. Senate. Hi, John. Hi, Rachel. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. Um, Absolutely. This is, I mean, it means so much to me that you're here because I've been wanting to talk to you, so this is perfect. It absolutely is. It's my honor and pleasure to be here. Thanks. So John, before we get started, maybe tell the listeners a little bit about yourself, your background, you know, you're running for U.S. Senate, so go into some details. I, I am. You know, the thing to know about me is that when you look at me, I'm the walking, breathing, living embodiment of the American dream, single mother, welfare, food stamps, living in one of the worst neighborhoods in America, a place called Highland Park, Detroit, extremely violent, uh, subject to some of that violence. Uh, worked hard. I was a high school dropout for several for several months because uh, of the violence, and uh, I found a small school, and they let me make payments. Uh, I got out of that, went to college, went to law school in Boston, joined the Marines after the Marines, uh, opened up a law firm and small business. And I've been representing mesothelioma, asbestos victims against major companies, insurance companies for the last 22 years. Uh, got into Bitcoin and crypto and ended up suing the SEC because of its overreach. That overreach that we've been witnessing. My opponent is primary sponsor of that overreach, Elizabeth Warren. And um, the bottom line is I got in the race because uh, we're at a crisis in America, a crisis of leadership in Washington, D.C., where elites like Elizabeth Warren, they just fuel division amongst people to keep power. And I think people are ready for a change, and I'm excited to give them that change. Yeah, well, I'm excited because we are ready for a change. I'm very pro-crypto, pro-Bitcoin, and you are as well. Um, Let's talk a little bit about, you know, you're running for U.S. Senate. So what are what are your views on crypto? What are your views on policies in general? No, that's a great question. You know, I get often asked, uh, am I pro crypto candidate? And I always answer it. No, I'm a pro freedom candidate. And Bitcoin and crypto is just, just another asset class that if you believe it's in your best interest for you or your family to have exposure to that asset class. The government should be in the business to telling you what you can and what you can't own. Elizabeth Warren does that. So that's the first thing. Um, I've been fighting when I sued the SEC. Um, I've been fighting for smart, tailored regulations. Uh, it's unfortunate that we're trying to apply 1933 law or a case from the Supreme Court that everyone's heard, the Howey case from 1946, to modern day blockchain technology, artificial intelligence, robotics, or any of the other technologies that are moving forward. And so we need Congress, the Senate, for example, to do its job and to give entrepreneurs clear rules, uh, clear guidance so that entrepreneurs can take off like that we did in the internet era. And I think this is another era. And so I favor regulation that protects consumers, but also facilitates and fosters innovation. And I think that's what we need. I want to take this time to thank the sponsor behind Web3 Deep Dive podcast, Merlin Chain. Merlin Chain is a Bitcoin layer two that integrates zero knowledge rollup, decentralized Oracle network, and on-chain BTC fraud modules. Merlin Chain is committed to empowering Bitcoin native assets, protocols, and products on layer one through its Layer 2 network to make Bitcoin fun again. Merlin Chain is a subsidiary product line of Bitmap Tech, a premier OG team boasting an overall market cap exceeding $500 million. The BRC420 Blue Box collection under Bitmap Tech has become one of the hottest assets on ordinals. Do you think that you, the United States is entering a phase where we may see that innovation happen? I mean, for instance, Trump, very pro-Bitcoin all of a sudden. I mean, or maybe he has always been. I don't know, but he's very public about it now. 
Um, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think that if Trump was reelected, we're going to kind of see a lot of innovation in terms of like freedom and crypto? Well, you know, it's unfortunate that Bitcoin or crypto would become partisan, right? And it would be identified with one party over the other. When you think of crypto and you think of why I got involved in it, I thought of my mom who couldn't have a bank account and she has to use to cash her welfare check at the check cashing stores that you see. Uh, and they would charge 10, 20 percent. When I would send her money when I was in college through Western Union, they would charge 20, 15 percent. And so when you think of crypto and being able to eliminate those predatory fees, someone like Elizabeth Warren, you would think would identify with this, the unbanked, the underbanked, uh, lifting people up out of poverty, expanding the middle class. Uh, and we've been engaged in this fight. Here's the good news. The good news is that Crypto and Bitcoin will be a topic at the presidential debates. It's certainly a topic now in, in my race because Elizabeth Warren is trying to ban the self-custody of Bitcoin and crypto, which it shouldn't be because we have real world issues, immigration, debt crisis, opioid crisis, foreign wars, inflation. So we have to ask ourselves, why is a senator like Senator Warren with all those real world issues focused on trying to prevent a technology from moving forward. Uh, so that's something I'm looking forward to her asking. But America's changing. We've seen the impact that the industry can have. Uh, the White House today just said they're starting to pivot because they see that uh, if they make it a partisan issue, they could end up on the wrong side. So I think that's good news. Uh, I think Biden's administration is starting to get that picture. Gary Gensler has become a real political liability. And so I think that fortunately, I think crypto is going to become bipartisan eventually. Yeah. It's interesting because, you know, we're in the process of getting the Ethereum ETF passed. I think step one happened and now we're just waiting for the other step. But I was speaking with James Safer, the Bloomberg ETF research analyst, and he was saying the reason why the Ethereum ETF passed in the first place or part one, you know, happened was right. because of politics. He thinks it was all political. We wrote an article on Crypto News about it today. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think that the Ethereum ETF had a lot to do with politics and that's why it came about? Well, I, I'm going to take a slightly different view. I, I think certainly politics played a role and I wouldn't disagree with James on that. But let, let's go back when Larry Fink takes from BlackRock, the biggest, largest asset manager in the world at 11 trillion under management, when they take the greatest performing asset of all time, Bitcoin, create a spot ETF and it becomes the greatest performing spot ETF in the history of the world and they're making fees off that, you think they might say, hmm, maybe we could do this with Ethereum too, you know what I mean, or others. And so I think the success of the spot ETF and they, they when I say they, I mean Wall Street sees that kind of success. Uh, they're going to get greedy or smart, however you want to characterize it and say, hey, uh, if we can do it with Bitcoin, you know, maybe these others won't be as successful, but there is uh, an appetite from at least worldwide, but certainly in America right now for exposure to this alternate asset class. And so I think it's a combination of politics certainly played a role, but also Wall Street seeing the success and the appetite that people have. Listen, Coinbase had come out and said that 52 million Americans owned crypto, Bitcoin and crypto, before the spot ETF. When you include the spot ETF, Rachel, it could be as high as 80 million people have some exposure in America to this asset class, either through owning it itself or through an ETF. And so I think that uh, when the greatest, biggest asset manager in the world starts calling it a safe haven, then people are going to pay attention and others are going to follow. Freedom GPT is an app store for AI. Freedom GPT is most commonly known for its sensor free AI model called Liberty that answers literally any prompt you ask with an unbiased response. Unlike other AIs where controversial topics are off limits, Freedom GPT embraces the concept that you should be able to ask AI anything. Equally important, Freedom GPT has the option to be run locally on your computer so your data remains 100% private and secure. Check out Freedom GPT's over 80 AI models today. Um, John, can we talk a little bit about what you want to enable if you were elected 
as a U.S. Senator? Well, the first thing I'm going to do, Rachel, is I'm going to propose a bill that institutes term limits so that senators like Elizabeth Warren would be limited to two terms, which is 12 years. Let's use her as an example. 12 years ago, she pounded the table. She was going to go to Washington, D.C. to hold the banking industry accountable. She was outraged that no banker went to prison from the 2008 financial crisis, and that's why she was going to D.C. A decade later, who wrote her last bill, anti-crypto bill? the banking industry. That's what happens in Washington. Even if she had good intentions, she couldn't beat them, so she joined them. And I want to stop that. And so, and I'm also going to institute, you know, bills that allow America to be number one in new technology, including blockchain, Web3 applications, because unfortunately for the last few years, entrepreneurs have taken this path of saying, we just won't offer it in the United States, or we won't let U.S. investors invest in it. And you can't lead if they're too scared to be here because they're going to get sued or they're going to have to spend all their money fighting the government. And so it's going to be protect the consumer against fraud, but allow innovation to happen here so that we can lead the world. For sure. You mentioned earlier in the interview that you sued the SEC. Can you go into details there? Sure. Uh, on January 1st, uh, 2001, it was nine days after the Ripple case was filed. Um, the truth is I owned a lot more in Bitcoin. I've always been more into Bitcoin than anything. Uh, but I did have a little bit of exposure to XRP. And what the SEC did was for the first time in history, they didn't just try to limit the allegations against a company or its executives. They took the position that the asset itself, XRP, which is just alphanumeric code, right? That's all it is, it's digital code, software code, that it itself was an unregistered security and anyone who owned it, you or me, anybody who owned it, owned an unregistered security. Uh, even if that person had never heard of Ripple or, or those executives, that was out Outrageous. And so uh, I sued the SEC and 75,000 holders joined me. They got inspired by it because I did it pro bono and 143 different countries, including the United States. So I had people from Ukraine and Russia. They're at war, but I have token holders from both joining me to fight the SEC. And the great news is we won because the judge cited the brief that I filed and other things that I did. So it was a, a, a big success and uh, something I'm very proud of. Right, yeah, this is all coming back to me now with the, the Ripple case and everything. So um, yeah, now, so there's two people I know, you and Caitlin Long, who have sued the SEC, I think. Yes. I think Caitlin also told me she, she might have done that. Yeah, Kate, Kate, Caitlin is a warrior yeah. uh, and uh, the founder of Custodial Bank. Right. A, another example, and, and arguably her case is one of the most important cases that, that we've seen where uh, the Federal Reserve uh, denied Custodial Bank having a master account when they were supposed to grant it, all because she had this crazy idea of 100% reserves. I know I'm getting a little bit in the weeds, but uh, basically there could never be a bank run if the bank always has the assets on hand. And that's something very different than our traditional banking system. And she was punished for that uh, by being denied that. And I'm, I'm hopeful that on appeal, she's gonna be successful. Right. John, any final remarks that you want our listeners to know about that I might not have already asked you about? Well, as it relates to my race, I'd want them to know that, you know, sometimes you fight the toughest fight. And I wouldn't be in this race against Senator Warren if I couldn't win. Uh, there is a path to victory. And uh, if they can go to JohnDeatonForSenate.com and help, it'd be much appreciated because we're going to shock the world. Definitely. Well, I'm all about that. I'm hoping to see more innovation in the United States. I don't want people in the Web3 industry to go offshore. 100%. So I'm hoping that you can help America thrive and build and be the next Web3 nation. Absolutely. Keep doing what you're doing because what you're doing is very important as well, making sure that innovators and people who are trying to help the industry uh, get the attention they deserve. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. John. Thank you. I'd also like to thank the sponsors behind Web3 Deep Dive. You can click the links in the show notes to learn more about each of the Web3 initiatives from these sponsors. Finally, thanks to the listeners for tuning in. Please be sure to subscribe, like, and share. I'll see you guys next time.